Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. <clears throat> All those who share Prabhupada, welcome to devotees to today's Bhagavatam class. And this morning, we are going to be covering uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Leela, chapter 4, verses 107 and 108. And the chapter is entitled, The Confidential Reasons for the Appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We are very happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and Sri Prabhupada Maharaj. Hare uh, Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. Your obeisances to all the devotees. Okay, we'll begin. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrindam, Shesha Lilaya Prabhuva, Krishna Varaha Umada, Rama Maya Chaita Aram, Pralapa Maya Vada. In the final portion of his pastimes, Lord Chaitanya was obsessed with the madness of separation from Lord Krishna. He acted in erroneous ways and talked derilously, derilously. There we go. So somebody pronounced that word, derilously. I mean, deliriously? Delirious. Yeah. Deliriously. Okay, yeah. Okay, purport. Lord Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya exhibited the highest stage of feeling of a devotee in separation from the Lord. This ex exhibition was sublime because he was completely perfect in the feelings of separation. Materialists, however, cannot understand this. Sometimes materialistic scholars think he was diseased or crazy. Their problem is that they always engage in material sense gratification and can never understand the feelings of the devotees and the Lord. Materialists are most abominable in their ideas. They think that they can enjoy directly perceivable gross objects by their senses, and that they can similarly deal with the transcendental features of Lord Chaitanya. But the Lord is understood only in pursuance of principles laid down by the Goswamis headed by Srupa Damodar. Doctrines like those of Nadia Nagaris, a class of so-called devotees, are never presented by authorized persons like Sarubdhamadar or the six Goswamis. The idea of the Garanga Nagaris are simply a mental concoction and they are completely on the mental platform. Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gadavena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutare Shri Makti Bhakti Vinidanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gavani Pacharine Nirase Sasunyu Adi Pastyatya De Satarine Vansha Kalpa Turubis Cha Kripa Sindhu Pare Bacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bionam Mahona Maha Jai Si Krishna Chaitanya Prabhundityananda Sri Advaita Gadathar Sivasani Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So one of my first uh, Contacts with Krishna consciousness was back in the year 1970 when I went to it a, a uh, anti-war rally against the Vietnam War, and, uh, and that's the first time I saw the devotees. They were there, and of course I had never seen them before, nor even heard of them. And uh, I received one particular pamphlet when I was there. The devotees were distributing. And it was called, it was a two-part pamphlet. It had two articles in one pamphlet. Uh, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the second article was, Who is Crazy? And then in the 
understanding of that article, as Prabhupada pointed out, you say we are crazy and we say you are crazy. So who is correct? Let us discuss. Uh, so craziness can be described as one who doesn't know who they are or how they're supposed to act. That will be one definition of craziness. And of course, there's full-blown craziness. There's In Sanskrit, it's called madha, unmada, and pramata. Crazy, more crazy, and ultimately mad. <laughs> so the materialists, they think that they are their body. So the whole premise of life is wrong. When you when you do a mathematical equation, if you get the basic arithmetic wrong, you might do the rest of the equations after that correctly, but the, the conclusion will be off because the foundation is not correct. So everything the materialists do is wrong, and it's an example of craziness because it's situated on the on the wrong idea that I am this body which you're not. <laughs> you're, you are a spiritual being who lives within a material body, but you are not the body. So when the materialists try to analyze and understand the devotees, they use their same logic that, that they practice for their own lifestyle, and they equate the devotees' activities to be something like something mad. But it's understood that those who actually don't know who they are can't tell who anybody else who they're not who they are either because they don't know the teacher becomes the cheater and the cheater now is uh, now in the position of a teacher and can't give any any good advice or understanding so here when they see or hear about sri chaitanya mahaprabhu they think he is mad. But the understanding is that in the process of bhakti, there are different levels of experiences of love. And here we're hearing of one of the highest form of love. And this is mentioned by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in himself, in his own writings, in verse number seven of the Shikshi Shastika. Uh, he says, no, what's the other one? Govinda uh, What is number seven? Nayanam Gadga Dashrudharaya. That's no, that's six. Number the next one. That's the one I'm looking for, yeah. Govinda uh, Virahename. I'm considering uh, a moment of time to be like 12 years. Time is relative to your consciousness. Sometimes people describe time as some kind of uh, calculation that the clock does, but that's not time. That's just a measurement of a certain element of time. Time is a greater factor. Time is actually the force that moves everything in the material world from one situation to another. Time is powerful. And time is the impersonal aspect of Krishna. It's his, is its external energy working. So according to your consciousness, you perceive time differently. If you're happy and you're active, you'll see that time moves very fast. If you are um, unhappy and you're doing things, you'll see that time works according to the clock. <laughs> or now if you're waiting if you're waiting for something to happen, you'll see that time practically stops. <laughs> it's all relative to your consciousness. The feeling of the movements of time is, is experienced differently by different persons. 
And so Lord Chaitanya is exhibiting that he's so much uh, desiring to have the association of the Lord. He's in the role of his own devotee. He is Krishna himself, but he's playing the role as, of his pure devotee. And in that mood, he says, one moment is like 12 years or more time it becomes so slow and therefore the suffering that one is undergoing that time cannot be ex uh, explained it's just unbearable what is that suffering the separation from krishna and so this is the mood of the mood of what is called vipralamba bhav or worshiping Krishna in the mood of serving Krishna in separation. And this is illustrated by this verse that was mentioned, that, yeah, I'm so much wanting you to be with you, but I'm not with you, and I can't think of anything else that I want to do, nor even if something comes to my mind, it doesn't make sense. Even Raghunath Das Goswami, when he was in this mood of separation to Krishna, he was describing that the environment within Vrindavan, which is sacred, the Govardhan Hill and the Jamuna and all of the beautiful caves that Krishna and Radharani used to sport in, all of these things seem to be like dreary voids. They have no meaning in my life anymore because you're not here. You're not with me. So this mood of separation changes, brings one's consciousness to a, a level of hankering. But if one continues in that mood and continues to serve Krishna in the mood of separation, now this serving, serving Krishna in that mood of separation is the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the execution of devotional service. One should not think wrongly that I, I got Krishna, I know Krishna, I'm Krishna conscious. These are all uh, kind of like statements of a, uh, of a speculative mind which have no, has no reality in, in, in existence. Devotees always think, I want to serve Krishna, but I'm so far, far from Krishna so I'm going to serve Krishna in the best possible way and do it so nicely that he's going to come and accept my offering. And when he does, I can actually experience his presence. That's how a devotee thinks. And that happens too. The devotee becomes so absorbed in serving and they're doing it with complete attention, devotion, and with a desire that Krishna will accept my offering that Krishna does come seeing the, the, the bhakti of his devotee and he comes and the devotee feels very strongly the presence of the Lord within his mind and within his heart. And in some cases, Krishna actually appears to him in person by the power of his love in the mood of service. And then, but then Krishna, who he is, he doesn't stay long. <laughs> <laughs> he's always moving and so he he uh, comes and accepts your offering gives you his mercy and then he disappears and then the mood of separation continues and this time it's even stronger because of the taste that one experiences having had that that feeling of krishna being with me it becomes even more so and that's how bhakti goes and then when, and this continues on, and then the devotee always wants to uh, bring Krishna into his life by serving Krishna nicely and getting his personal experience, his personal presence, that uh, at one point that uh, the devotee can't live without Krishna anymore. And then when it becomes impossible to live without Krishna, then Krishna takes him back to the spiritual world. He looks at everything in his life. He sees whatever he has or whatever. He, he just he sees his body as a big burden. 
he sees his mind as a just a a, a, a receptacle of just trying to serve Krishna more and more. He sees his personal possessions, his family members and friends as simply just has no meaning anymore in life. <laughs> At that point, Krishna says, all right, now you're ready. <laughs> and then Krishna personally comes and takes the devotee, personally comes and takes the devotee back to him in the spiritual world. On to the next first. <laughs> Radhikara bhava yache udava dasane se bhava matta prabhu rahi rachadine. Just as Radhika went mad at the sight of Uddhava, so Lord Chaitanya was obsessed day and night with the madness of separation. Purport Those under the shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can understand that his mode of worship of the Supreme Lord. And separation is the real worship of the Lord. When the feelings of separation become very intense, one attains the stage of meeting Krishna. So-called devotees like the Sahajis cheaply Im imagine they are meeting Krishna in Vrindavan. Such thinking may be useful, but actually meeting Krishna is possible through the attitude of separation taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. So here, it's, this verse confirms what we were saying. When the feelings of separation become very intense, one attains the stage of meeting Krishna. And then in Lord Chaitanya's prayer, he ends, as lisyava pinaritam punastumam darshanam marmahatam karo tuva yatadata va viradatu lampato matpranam nastu sa evana paraha. And then, in, in in meeting with you, you can kick me, you can embrace me, you can neglect me, you can do anything you want because I have given myself completely over to you in, in, in loving service. So the devotee doesn't care anything anymore. Krishna is present and whatever Krishna does, that's fine because the love is there. <laughs> And then Prabhupada goes on to explain that verse and that what we just mentioned is is the culmination of the, those eight prayers in Shikshastika, which are the essence of pure devotional service, culminating in meeting Krishna in whatever way Krishna wants that meeting to happen. Not that I want to meet Krishna under these conditions or this situation, no. Meeting Krishna is so wonderful, it doesn't matter what he does or what he doesn't do. <laughs> the, the, the feeling of unhappiness comes in that situation when a devotee thinks, Krishna's here, it's so wonderful, but Krishna's going to go again, and then, oh no, then I'll be more miserable than I was before he even came. So that's the anxiety that sometimes when a devotee gets the association of the Lord and it becomes such a powerful feeling of happiness that all of a sudden they also think, oh no, he's going to leave again. And then they're, then they're plunged into a, a whirlpool of sadness. <laughs> Here, the devotees like the Sahajis, they cheaply, you know, many times during the ISKCON movement when Prabhupada was preaching in different places, such persons would appear just to make a show of their devotion to Krishna. Actually, it wasn't devotion, it was more of a show. There was one time when one person, Prabhupada was in his room, and one man just happened to walk in. The door wasn't locked. Nobody was guarding. Prabhupada was there with one of his disciples. And the man came in, looked at Prabhupada, fell to the floor, and started to exhibit it, some ecstatic systems and start rolling on the ground. And, and Prabhupada's watching. <laughs> and then Prabhupada turns to his disciple and says, Go over there and kick him. 
And so he did, and then the man got up and ran and left and left. So it was just a show. Papa says, they make a show, and then people are impressed, and then they go out and they light up their cigarettes and they enjoy some kind of intoxication. So this, is, this goes on in the name of, just like you see, you have real money and then you have counterfeit money. So when something is valuable, people like to imitate it, although the substance is not there. There's always copying, cheating, pretense. It's always there. It's like there are real devotees and there are devotees who pose themselves as devotees but are really not devotees. Prabhupada called them Kali Chela. They have Tilak, they have uh, Ponytail, Sika, and uh, Mala, but they're disciples of Kali. That's their program. So you'll see that wherever the genuine is there, just like when Krishna was in Vrindavan, yeah, he was enjoying his pastimes with his um, with his uh, intimate associates, the cowherd boys and the gopis and his parents. And many demons would come and attack. <laughs> and Krishna would kill the demons one after another. So here is the purest place on earth, and yet the demons come and cause trouble. Yeah. So you could expect that wherever there is purity, there is attack from the outside to try to destroy it, water it down, uh, change it around, do something to make it different. But as long as one stays fixed in their process of Krishna consciousness, fixed means strong sadhana, strong sadhana, keeping regular sadhana and chanting the holy names of the Lord with attention, with as much devotion as one can acquiesce, and not diverting one's time to anything else during that time period. When in the ISKCON society, the temple programs are long. Sometimes we start at 4.30 in the morning with Mangalarti and then Tulsi Puja, two hours of Japa, Guru Puja, class, uh, so for, from 4.30 to about almost 8.30, 9 o'clock, there's an intense four-hour session of absorption in the activities of you know, devotional service. And if, you, one was, if one wants to really accelerate their Krishna consciousness, go to a temple, stay there for a while and follow the morning program. And that will intensify your Krishna consciousness. Just like Prabhupada said, there are people who, who want to make money on the stock market. And so there's two, two categories of people. Those who stay outside the stock market and do their trading and buying from there. And those who are right on the stock market floor and seeing all of the changes right as they're happening, they're getting more action. They're getting more uh, uh, benefit than those who are a distance away and simply watching it and then doing it accordingly. So this is a way to accelerate your Krishna consciousness. If you find your home too difficult to practice Krishna consciousness, too many distractions, we look around the room and when we're chanting Japa, we see what we have to do. Some object reminds us of something. Someone comes in and wants to talk to us. We forget to shut off our cell phone and there's intrusion from the messages coming in, the phone calls. Yeah, and it's the distraction. That is not really good sadhana. Sadhana should not be interrupted by anything must be done in a continuous way. So if you can do that at your home, then that will be ideal. But we find that it's very difficult to do that. But if you can, and it's possible, but then again, if you want to 
just accelerate your bhakti, just go to a temple and stay there for maybe a week or two, follow the program. And you'll see the qualitative differences in your consciousness as you absorb yourself in the morning and maybe also the evening program. Like that. So we recommend that. It's highly recommended to do that. And that will uh, give us uh, a real taste of Krishna consciousness. And when that taste goes through the different stages of development, just like there are different, there's six different tastes. There's salty, sour, bitter, pungent, uh, astringent, and sweet. So the sweet taste is very much desirable by many people. The uh, pungent taste is also desirable by many like that. The other tastes may be also to some degree, but taste also has gradations. So there is, there is gradations of sweetness. There's sweet and more sweet, ultimate sweetness and you know, sweet that can never be described. So, so in in the tastes, there is different levels of the same taste as it goes more intense into that that taste. So, in the same way, we intensify our bhakti to the point where it gets to the point where we actually start to feel attraction for Krishna in a very deep way. And then, when that reaches a certain level, then all we can do is think about Krishna. All we can do is serve, find ways to serve Krishna. And like here, it comes to the stage of Lord Chaitanya where he is simply apparently mad from an external point of view, but his madness is just an experience of his love for the Lord and his feeling of separation at the same time. It's two things that mix but don't mix. They mix in the sense that separation from the Lord is one of the levels of loving, but mm, they don't mix in the sense that that separation brings some type of feeling of unhappiness, which is transcendental to ordinary unhappiness, but it's a feeling of loss, a feeling of loneliness, a feeling of despondency. But it's on, it's on the transcendental platform, and it ultimately brings one to the highest stage of meeting Krishna in pure loving devotion. So these verses here really help us understand the process of bhakti, because the process of bhakti is must come to the stage of being attracted to Krishna in a very continuous way. Then our bhakti has been come mature, when we can only perform and only think of Krishna, nothing else. We might do our work, we might eat, we might sleep, we might take care of our body in different ways. But while we're doing that, Krishna is always on our mind. He never leaves the mind of the devotee. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Marge, for such a wonderful class and really uh, bringing us down to the ground level platform of Krishna consciousness and making it, helping us to see how strong that foundation should be. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to ask a request devotees, if you can please um, turn on your videos wherever possible. And if anyone has any questions, please do raise your hand. Um, or you can put it in the chat and I will be happy to ask, to read your question. Um, Maharaj, in the second verse, um, in the purport, you know, the, the phrase that caught my attention is the attitude of separation. How should, what should our attitude be, Maharaj, in separation? Yeah, I'm going to keep serving so nicely until I until Krishna comes and comes and takes my service and accepts my service. It's like chasing Krishna through the process of serving Krishna. 
That's the attitude of separation. And Raj, how will we know that that the, that the end result will happen? Like how? Doesn't matter. It will. Oh. <laughs> if you stay with <laughs> Krishna, okay. will eventually come and accept and and awaken within you that love that you're trying to experience in his personal persons. So that means, Marge, we should not, our attitude should not be looking and waiting. We should just be continuing it regardless. We, you know, part of that, you might say, praying is there, anchoring. When Krishna left the Rasa dance, uh, because Radharani had left, and then Krishna left because Radha, the Rasa dance without Radharani was impossible for Krishna. So then all the other gopis were all alone. So they went looking for Krishna. And they were going this way and that way and this way and that way. And they were imitating Krishna's pastimes. They were talking to the deer. They were talking to the trees. They were talking to the grass, asking, where is Krishna? <laughs> So it seems like some kind of madness. <laughs> but it's a feeling of love that becomes so intense that one wants to try to fulfill that that loving need by doing something to bring Krishna back. <laughs> so when the gopis were feeling like that, they would be speaking to inanimate objects. And then when the inanimate objects wouldn't answer, they would say, oh, they would say something about the inanimate objects. Oh, they're too busy, or they don't want to hear us. Or so. <laughs> so their madness was continuous. So the mood is service. <laughs> this this mood of separation doesn't mean one stops serving Krishna. One thinks more and more ways to to serve Krishna. And that can take that can take. A type of inaction or it can take very practical activity either way but the mood of service is there all right i'm going to track krishna i'm going to cook what he likes so nicely and he'll come to my house and then he'll 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 accept my offering so what does he like yeah yeah he likes rascula okay i'm going to make the best rascula and then i'm going to invite krishna to come and take it so these are moods of separation like that. Thank you, Marge. It's very sweet. Thank you. Krishna Kaviraj Prabhu, go ahead. Thank you very much. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you and your services. And my humble obeisances to all of the devotees. Very much. Can you please explain to me the differences and the subtleties or, or the, the, the sameness, if they're the same, between serving Krishna and serving the spiritual master? Well, the direction by which we learn to serve Krishna is given to us by the spiritual master. And the spiritual master also is the medium by which he offers our service to Krishna. But when you get to the spontaneous platform, then it's it's no more under the guise of rules and regulations. It becomes natural. And so one doesn't have to consult the spiritual master to find out what to do. They're already attracted to Krishna automatically. And they think of different ways to somehow bring Krishna presence into their life by doing different services. So spiritual master is always there. But if you want to know the process actually is that when one gets to the platform of Raganuga Bhakti, then they start taking on Raganuga Sadhana, and that's different than ordinary sadhana. And that's taught by the spiritual master for those who are qualified. That's Raganuga Sadhana. Because without coming to spontaneous devotional service, 
you haven't completed bhakti. Rules and regulations are just the preliminary stage of, of bhakti. They're required and they move you along to the different levels of bhakti. But at one point you 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 move into the area of spontaneous devotional service. But there's where you need assistance. And therefore the spiritual master comes to help you. Or he sends another, if you if you're not personally, he's not personally present, he'll send a qualified representative of himself to take you to the next level. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. So if we are if we've uh, given some service in the local temple, obviously you won't be there. Uh, but say it's only a small service just for the day or something, so it's it's we wouldn't uh, contact you in this it's only a small service that day. Would it still be service to the spiritual master or service through the spiritual master? Yeah, but only everything goes through the spiritual master. Whether you consciously offer it or not, unless you're a pure devotee, then you can serve Krishna directly. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. But pure devotion doesn't come so easily. Then the spiritual master, is, his work is done, but still, you still have your spiritual master. Prabhupada said, when you go back to the spiritual world, I'll be there to greet you. You still have your, your spiritual master is eternal. It's not like mm, the Maya bodies, they think, oh yes, yeah, so we get a spiritual master and then we climb higher on the spiritual ladder. And then when we reach the top, then we kick out the ladder and we don't need the spiritual master anymore. We become the spiritual master. That's Mayavad. Devotees always connect. They give all credit and all honor to their spiritual master because they know without him, there is no connection with Krishna ultimately. Very nice question, Krishna Kavash, but we hope that helped. <clears throat> yes, that's very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions from devotees? Maj, I wanted to piggyback on my questions. And when you said about serving in separation, and you're talking about the gopis, you know, how they were looking for Krishna when he disappeared. And then I was thinking that personally, that hankering, that looking, that desire of my, you know, where's my Lord is not there. Does that mean, Maharaj, is because the heart is still hard? It needs more cleaning. The mind needs more cleaning. No, not necessarily. Could be or could not be. Could even be ready. But it's up to Krishna when he wants to come. It's like Mother Yasoda. She tried to bind Krishna. She had pure love for Krishna. There's no question. But she couldn't. It's only when Krishna came and accepted the fact that he he wanted to please his his mother, so he he allowed her to bind up. So Krishna comes when he wants to come, or he doesn't come. Whatever when he wants, he's independent. He may be testing your love. He may be seeing if, if he continues to wait, and your love will get stronger and stronger. <laughs> So, Marsh, does that mean that even when a person, and, and you mentioned Mother Yashoda, even though the person is ready, has the love, but Krishna will decide when he wants to come. So it's like pretty much what's coming to my mind is the pastime of Shabari and Lord Ram. Yeah. Yeah, she had a way. All of her, her guru and all of his disciples, which were her god brothers, they all went back to the spiritual world. She, he told them, "You wait, and Ram, Ram will come. When you come, when Ram will come, you'll, you, 
you you offer him something and so she was just she was patient but she was testing by uh, tasting the different berries see which one was offered to him and which one she would not offer to him so she had full faith in this in the instructions of her spiritual master and she was willing to wait <laughs> But she didn't just wait. She was testing. I want to. We don't. I don't know if there's any statement saying how long she wait, but it wasn't that Ram came right away. <laughs> it wasn't. And that wasn't indicated at all in that Leela. Many decades went by. It is said, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. That sounds right. So, Marge, what 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 I'm understanding is the process of Krishna consciousness is we keep on serving, we keep on praying, we keep on hankering, even if we develop the proper or the right love for the Lord, we still keep on until that the Lord is ready to come to us. Uh, love of God is described as five different ingredients. Four of them are very pleasant. I think uh, camphor and saffron and s some various sweet tasting ingredients. But there's one other ingredient that's mentioned that's called black pepper. <laughs> so. Well, I'm a spicy eater, so I think I can do that, Marge. <laughs> In other words, there is a little hotness, a little, what we might say, a little burning of the, the love of God is, it, it's, it can't be described. It's just not possible to describe it. But when you're in the spiritual world, it's perfect. There's nothing, but when you're still in this material world, there's still that that burning of being in the material world. <laughs> Marge, is there hope for us? <laughs> I'm like, it's just like getting really deep. It's so deep, I'm thinking, oh, Krishna. <laughs> well, there is, there is hope against hope. And then there's a higher one that's called hopelessness. <laughs> there's no hope. Forget it. <laughs> no, don't forget it. But just realize there's no hope. <laughs> Marge, at least I think uh, as uh, trying to be a disciple, at least we can definitely put our hope and praise in our spiritual master that will take us back, to help us take us back to God at Marge. Yeah, there's a lot of mercy in this particular movement. <laughs> Thank you, Krishna. This one of, <laughs> if you want to thank somebody, thank Lord Nityananda. <laughs> yes, Maharaj, because this is one long haul. It's not like a long haul. Yeah, it's a, what is that? Uh, let's see. Uh, what is that verse? Uh, Nitai Padakamalam Koti Chandra Sushitala Ye Chayaya Jagaduli I. And that the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda soothes the burning of material existence like millions of cooling moons. <laughs> if we stay close to Gornitai, then we will experience mostly happiness. <laughs> Gordon and I are very unbelievably merciful. Krishna is not is not as merciful as Gordon and I is, although it's the same person. <laughs> Krishna is he he demands certain things. Gordon and I doesn't demand anything. They are very merciful, Marge, absolutely. Unbelievable. Yeah. And our movement centers around Gornitai. That's why 
the essence of our movement and the scriptures just just go deeper and deeper into this essence and come up with the same conclusion. The holy name is everything. <laughs> it's the holy name that's everything. <laughs> yeah. There's that beautiful prayer. So I think I might have it with me. Let me see. Give me one minute. I'll be right back. No problem, Arch. Sri Devi, I'll, I'll come to you when once March comes back. I haven't forgotten your hand raised. Oh, I was just remembering Bhakti Tita Maharaj simply by your comment. And in one of his books, he writes that uh, uh, nothing you can ever do uh, can get you anywhere. It is your spiritual master's prayers and yeah. blessings and mercy. That's what has gotten you this far and will continue to get you further. That's the only thing. He writes in one of his books that it's the spiritual master's mercy. The Lord told him that. My dear child, it's nothing except your spiritual master's prayers and blessings that has got you here. Thank you for sharing that, Sri Devi. It gives me hope. <laughs> we, we that, that must be hope. One of, it must be one of the bigger seeds then. Let me put it there. Yeah. yeah. There's one devotee who's the god brother of Maharaj in Alachua who also acts. Sometimes he was acting in the actress. I don't know whether you remember his name, but he said one line that it was really inspiring even to our Guru Maharaj. The holy name of Sri Krishna is all you ever need. Remember that, Giridanagri? I there. don't remember. I can see the face clear if I forgot his name. Oh, is he from New Vrindavan? No. Uh, no? He lives from in the trailer right outside the temple in Alachua. 95 when we were there. He's there. I don't remember. The holy name. He was... He made a play about how the, the bird is not fed, but only the cage is decorated. Honey Bhushan nice Prabhu? Honey Bhushan, yeah. Yes. Honey Bhushan Prabhu. Yeah, the holy name of Sri Krishna is all you ever need. Yeah. And Bhakti and I repeated it so many times. <laughs> holy name of Sri Krishna is all you ever need. Yeah. And he asked him, hey, Krishna. I think yes. Maharaj is getting ready to come. That's, that's, I'm looking through that prayer. I have a particular file in it, but I can't find the file because I'm so disorganized here. <laughs> Maharaj, if you can share that when you find it, that would be great, Mike, because we all can use that prayer, any prayer right now <laughs> for our Krishna consciousness. Yeah, let me see one more place I'll look. Sure, March. Yeah. Krishna, Krishna, yeah, yeah. Hey, Krishna, hey, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Oh. Hmm. I might have left it in India. <laughs> I think it's in India. <laughs> Half my stuff is there. Okay, so anyway, but the author is anonymous. And the holy name, how's it go? The holy name uh, is, it goes on verse after verse. Uh, maybe when we come together at a different time, another time I'll, I'll have it ready. I can find it, but uh, Guru Maharaj, it is the holy name of Sri Krishna alone is everything. 
Yeah, the holy name of of Sri Hari is all that the yeah. holy name of Sri Hari is all that be. That's it. The holy name of Sri Hari is all that be. Though if you comb the scriptures, you don't have to really look very far. You'll find everything, the whole basis. At one point, those who are fixed in Krishna consciousness, their sadhana is one, chanting. That's all. That's all they do. They may do something else, but still, still they focus ultimately only on chanting Hare Krishna. That's it. The holy name of Sri Hari is is verily all that be. That's the word verily is verily all that be. And then he speaks about different aspects of life, and then he ends with that same line at the end there. <laughs> Such a it's a beautiful prayer. It's an anonymous author. Nobody knows who actually put it together. Like you said, Marge, everything comes back to the, holy uh, to the holy name. Everything comes back, even when you're mentioning about the attitude of separation, the service attitude, the hankering, everything comes back to the holy name. Uh, Mahima, I think you got a copy. Could you uh, can you come on and say something? I saw you put up something. Madura Madura BOP. That's one of the verses, yeah. Mahima. <laughs> Hi, Krishna Guru Maharaj. It's Hi. me, actually, Hi, both Krishna. of us. But our camera is off, unfortunately. So better for you, maybe. Do you, have that, do you have that prayer in front of you? Oh, I just Googled it. Uh, I found it on Iskand Desire Tree. And yeah. official name is Sri Sri Kevalastakam. Yeah, Kevalastakam. That's, That's what it's called. Versus. Yeah, there you go. Just make a note of that. This is called the Kevalastakam. Kevalastakam. If you, you Google that, you'll find that prayer. I can put the link in the chat. I'll just do it. Okay, good. Thank you, Mahatma. It was nice to hear Mahima's voice a little bit after, I think, 20 years for me. <laughs> I haven't heard a voice for a long time. <laughs> That was her husband. I heard a voice in the background, Marge, like a little bit of her voice when she was saying something. She's your god sister. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I haven't heard her voice and seen her for ages. So it's nice to hear her voice, a little bit of background. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> well, honestly, you buy your ticket and come to Italy. <laughs> I was afraid you're going to say that. <laughs> Krishna. Well, I'll, I'll make it even easier. Just, but we'll pay you. We'll pay your ticket. Just come to Italy. <laughs> Seriously, we will. Oh, Marge, if I can get you got out, a free ticket. <laughs> I, if I can get out for like you know four days and not worry about the temple service much, I'll be jump on the next plane. <laughs> but it's just you, you got what's that? You got that devotee there who's quite reliable. What's his name? Yeah, Mitra. Yeah, the one he comes on the line sometimes. I stayed at his house. <laughs> you stayed at his house. Bhavana? No, dear Krishna. Yeah. Oh, can, March, yeah, he has service, he has other commitments this weekend, and that's why I, like, I have to always stay put, yeah. All right. I'm, but Marge, I, every time I see, I think, when can I go, when can I go, when can I go? So I think Krishna is testing me, Maharaj, like you said, the hankering is not strong enough yet, <laughs> probably. Yeah. yeah, but you got a free ticket. <laughs> my and husband is really no. rubbing it in so bad. <laughs> it's a fact, man. I said openly to everybody. <laughs> well, I, I, see know, I know Mahima will be there. That's why I'm saying you could meet her. I haven't seen her. Mm -hmm. She used to address Radha Damodar so nicely in Gita Nagri. 
She was one of the backup pujaris for Radha Damodar. I remember that. I get she cooks for me every day. Wow, she's got in mercy. Yeah. Real mercy. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Separate. Any other questions? I'm sorry, Marge. Any other questions from devotees, please? This is such a beautiful topic, you know, separation, Vipralamba Seva. Keep on serving until the Lord comes. It's like so, so, so deep. Yes, Krishna Kaviraj, go ahead, Prabhu. Hi, Krishna. Very much. Huh? Very much. When we first come into Krishna consciousness, and there's like so much to learn, there's so much to do, there's so much services, and there's, there's everything, and it's all like, it can be quite overwhelming because it's like this whole ocean of things to do, things to see, things to experience. And and you, you sometimes you get a bit lost. I do this, should I do that? And then you kind of like, you settle into certain things um, under, under guidance from the spiritual master. Uh, and then like now, like, the last two books that I read, one being the Shikshastakam book that you recommended, and the other one being the Nectarian, something about holy names from Satchitananda Maharaj. And you've been talking also in your recent classes and today about the importance of the holy name. And reading all about this and hearing all about this, you just feel like you want to chant all the time. But you can't chant all the time because you've got all these other things and then it's like does chanting take priority over some of these things or do you have to do all of these other things and chant you, you're going to get different answers from different people <laughs> from me you'll I'll say that uh, we don't chant enough that's that's my thing. We should be chanting more. Uh, whether you can chant all the time, that's not, that's a certain level of spiritual development where you can actually perform that, but you should aspire to do that. You should aspire that, I, yes, I want to come to the point of always chanting Krishna's name. Whether I'm walking along the street or cooking or cleaning, why should I stop chanting just because I'm doing something with my body? My mind can always be on a holy name. So uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains if you chant regularly every day, then you'll come to the point of chanting always. That's why we have numerical vows to stabilize our level of chanting and to move forward where the vow, the numerical vow becomes a foundation by which we go farther into chanting regularly, that's all. Without having a uh, yeah. vow, then uh, we we won't be able to chant always because we'll just vacillate between how much time we want to give the holy name. Uh, numerical vows are good. They They solidify your consciousness towards developing more and more chanting. <laughs> yeah. Amazing so, points. You, you know, you asked, you know, with so much things to do in Krishna consciousness, yeah. That means why... Why are we wasting time doing so many other things we don't need to do? <laughs> I 
I got books that that are that I want to read. I haven't been able to get to them. Same so if you had books, should you read the books or should you just chant? Yeah, that's a matter of taste. Okay. okay thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I was actually uh, reading this book and I haven't finished it yet. Hope to finish it soon. It's the book by um, Mother Sitala about the glories of Natam Das Thakur, yeah, and yeah. yeah, and it it was so amazing that you know Natam Das Thakur, who was really hankering to see Lord Chaitanya, and because he you know, he appeared later on, and it was like Vipralamba Seva just reading, as at least to the point that I'm at, you know, was it was so beautiful. Yeah, that's a book that I couldn't put down <laughs> when I first got a copy of it. I actually ha I actually got a copy of that book before it was printed. Oh. I was reading it and I didn't want to it was so nectarian that I didn't want to finish it. So in order to preserve the the nectar, I was only reading one chapter every day. <laughs> So I could keep it going <laughs> like that. Marge, I just, I, I got, I think, one quarter left. And I'm really struggling to finish the last one quarter, trying to find time. It's like so amazing. It oh. was, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point after he had his, the after Nautam Das Thakur organized the first um, Gorpunima festival. <laughs> it was amazing. The, the kirtan that's described there is is from the it's it's frame kirtan it's not just kirtan mm. it's uh, lord chaitanya and all of his associates plus all of the devotees that had already left the planet after the disappearance of lord chaitanya yeah. they all appeared they all appeared in the kirtan and everyone saw them it was and and the way it was described was oh my it's just like as i was reading it you know we had trying to imagine it it, it was beautiful it's amazing i'm sorry Sri they even taking off your time go ahead mother sorry Oh, no problem, Ansiya. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my most humble obeisances and all glories to Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, what you said initially that just go and spend one week in the temple and what a difference it makes. I'm actually experiencing that. I'm actually experiencing that. I've been here now in Zagreb temple and it's so wonderful. Wake up early morning, go for Mangalarti, attend the whole program, chant your rounds with devotees in the temple room. It's just wonderful. Then evening, Goda Arti and, uh, you know, evening program. It is really something that, uh, uh, as you rightly said, all of us, once in a while, we need to take this break and just get absorbed once again, just to remember, this is the taste I'm hankering for. Because it's so difficult otherwise, Guru Maharaj, so difficult. The stresses of daily life and all the things are always eating at you. And uh, just to realize this is why I came to Krishna consciousness. This is what I'm hankering for. Yeah, so the, I just want to say that. That's modern, society, modern society is, wants to make your life miserable. Yeah, this to live in this modern, highly industrial, you know, technological society, you have to you have to be willing to give up all of the good qualities that come by way of one's uh, living in a natural and more sattvic environment. Everything is crazy. Just I'll give you an example. And this is a small example. Plastic. The whole world's full of plastic. 
and plastic has been now becoming a crisis. It can't, they can't, it doesn't break down. They can't get rid of it. And it's just so polluting anyway. If you have a bottle of water in a plastic bottle, if that sunlight hits that bottle, that plastic will leach into the water and you can, you can you can also get sick, maybe even get cancer from that. Our whole li lifestyle is polluted from top to bottom. Yeah. Aerosol sprays, polluted food, polluted air, traffic. It's just it's it's madness. That's why we're pushing. What Prabhupada wanted us to do, go back to a more natural lifestyle you know, with simple living, according to live according to the laws of material nature and not against the laws of material nature. We're fighting the laws of material nature in order to live according to our prescribed society as it is now. We're contrary to ourselves and to nature we ex simply exploit nature and everybody's sick i mean look around everybody's sick <laughs> so much sickness in the world i mean it's really monumental and because and people are suffering that's why this krishna consciousness movement has the formula for spirituality, chant the holy names, associate with persons who are doing that, and uh, organize your life according to higher spiritual to principle spiritual principles. And for day to day living, get out of these rotten cities and live in the, live in an environment which is natural according to uh, uh, to uh, God's arrangement. So, says that uh, man made the cities, God made the country, and the devil made the small town. <laughs> <laughs> the devil's made the small town, Hare Krishna. It's by Copper, that Arthur Copper, K.O. C O W P E R Coper. He said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Krishna Shetra Maharaj just did a first presentation on environmental activism within ISKCON, which was the sec uh, which was the, the uh, second in the series. The first one was done by Radhika Raman on the earth being non-different than, than Krishna and how to live in, in harmony with the earth. The second was mostly about cows and lifestyle. I can't remember the exact, I think it's called, let me see what it's called. I think I have it written down here. It's called Iskan's Environmental Series. You can try to find it somewhere on the Iskan media. Two, two programs have come so far by two different devotees. This kind of environmental series, which is a really a move back to a more simplified understanding of a, what real lifestyle is, or healthy lifestyle, natural lifestyle. You can still have your, you know, comfortable place to live but not that we depend on you know the food we eat the air we breathe everything is polluted uh someone put a post here let me read that yeah, yeah Nashringa said that uh, His Holiness Krishna Shetra Swami was having that presentation last Sunday in Slovenia. Yeah, but he did it online oh. on Monday. Yeah, he did it on Monday. 
Uh, and it was uh, it was on the twenty second of twenty uh, second of uh, this month. You mean April, March? April twenty second. Okay, so last week. Okay. Yeah, yeah. April twenty second. Yeah, that Thank was you. that was Earth Day. Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I think I saw that. I think I I I saw the um the what what they call it the promotion cow care cow care is earth care yes yes i saw that on facebook that's right that's right yeah listen to it it's really really okay. really interesting and enlightening and then uh, radhika raman did the first one speaking about earth as a substance for our existence how krishna is non-different than the earth because everything that is made up of the earth is coming ultimately from Krishna. And to collaborate with and to interact with Krishna means to interact with Krishna through the earth also. It's one way of connecting with Krishna. We, <clears throat> we go to work, we make money, paper money, and then we go out and we buy food so you have to work in order to get the money to buy your food why not just get a piece of land and, and plant your own food you still got to work no doubt but the quality of food is much better and you can also uh, you know have the opportunity to connect with nature in a very direct way There, people are waking up to this right now, especially the non-devotee class of people are really moving in that direction. Devotees are a little slower because for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> so read my book. It's uh, Krishna's Way Natural Living. Sri Devi, 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 Devi carries copies of my book around with, with her. Nice. So if you want to get a copy, you can just contact Sri Devi mm. or me. <laughs> Definitely, Maharaj. In fact, I think uh, when you came last year, you had the book and many of our devotees got it. And one of them, uh, Jit Mitra, um, loves that book he is he has this big desire to manifest that in in few years to come here so we're really hoping that he can make that magic happen he's young fired up believes in it has always be believed in it and has that drive so yeah you you're here you reside in an area where there is a lot of good farmland yes maharaj and that's why he has that drive. And I'm very happy he does. Good, good. We'll support him. Oh, this. yes. <laughs> In yeah. fact, my girls and, and one other devotee, I, I don't know whether this devotee is online, Damodar. Um, yes, he's there, Sarvanga Sundar Damodar. Yeah, these three, you know, they they these three with Ajit Mitra, these four, baby, I, I call them the four musketeers. They always hang out and discuss some stuff. Yeah, I... I had it one unit member, four musketers, and they're fired up to do this, to do that, to do garden, to do, you know, cafe. Like they just go at it. So we are hoping they can manifest because they are young Maharaj. They got the energy, they got the ideas, they got the young bodies, and they are ready. I said, go for it. <laughs> yeah. And they're very excited too. Very and excited. I, I was sitting in one of the meetings and boy, they're really going at it. Boy. <laughs> I said, all right, let's start put the plans together. Hey, to I'll, I'll do what I can to help. Hey. Yeah. But if we have the land, we should use it. We shouldn't just live on it. That's the that's the thing. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. First, the first stage is agriculture. Once you establish a, a certain level of growing your own food and having enough food available, and then after that, then you bring in cows. 
cows are not first. We've started, or many of our farm communities were bringing in cows at the beginning, and that's, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Cows come in after you establish agriculture, and that way there's enough food for the devotees and for the animals also. Mm -hmm. Then cows will take it to another level of purification. That's what my book is about. It's mostly about cows. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj Dhanasini, Jai Shri Prabhupada. Nice, nice idea. I always bother uh, some question about that uh, aspect of farming. Uh, and I do very, very minis minuscule scale Maharaj here. I grow at least 15, uh, 15 kinds of vegetable. I have like uh, around five, seven uh, fruits growing. The one part uh, I always bother is whenever we're tilting, uh, tilting the land or we have to use the pesticide on the vegetables as well as on the uh, f uh, fruit trees. Without that, it's not sustainable, not possible. So only my concern is we are uh, kill killing so many insects and uh, pesticides. So only that is how we can uh, digest that or how, how we can, you know, not to get uh, affected. Uh, that because without uh, using pesticide or the uh, other things to minimize hard to grow vegetables or fruits. Well, I'll do a little research and find out <clears throat> what are some of the alternatives. I'm not so much uh, aware of the different alternatives in that area. And there's different kinds of pesticides also. There's kinds that just to keep them away and there's others that kill them so you can get yeah, a more, more um, humane type of pesticide there are natural ones too i think yeah. we put it up one time and there was neem a lot oil. of on... neem oil spray is yeah. uh, very beneficial to keep the pests away yeah i see i see Okay. If you do a little research, you can find a lot of more humane type of, you know, pesticides. Okay. Okay. The moment we start digging the land with the first hit, you at least kill at least 10, 15 uh, souls down there. That much, you know, the different, different souls are there uh, in order to tilt and uh, put the, just uh, sow the seed in there. And that bothers me. Well, yeah, but the thing is, if you're doing it as a service to Krishna, there's no karma. But if you're doing it simply for your own interest, then it, then there is some reaction there. And so plant plant crops and then harvest them and then cook for Krishna and offer it to Krishna. I see. I see. Th thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much. They yeah. say farmer farming is the more the honorable occupation. <laughs> yeah, other aspects of uh, life is very wonderful. Uh, you stay with nature. You hear the Harikatha twenty four hour while farming. You can sing. Uh, there's so many other aspects, wonderful, you know. One will not get uh, depressed or the health benefit. There's so many ways, you know, one stays nourished and uh, healthy, balance, balanced life. Yeah, write, write, write about what you're doing. Write an article and distribute it and, and explain how you're benefiting from this. And this is good. Do something and also tell people, others, about the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that's wonderful. Yeah. And they will take it up too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we don't want to go on too long with this Zoom call. I'm sure devotees have things 
So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Marja. Thank you to all the devotees for joining us. Vanchaka Pityascha, Kripa Sindhu Bevika, Patita Nam Pavanevya, Vaishnavavya Namo Namaha, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ki Jai. Ki Chandramali Swami Ki Jai. Wonderful class, Marja. Thank you to all the devotees for joining us. And have a wonderful day and whatever rest of the time you have left in the day. Thank you very much for today's class.